Hi, pet lovers. Thank you for joining Gina's Grooming Channel. Thank you for joining us on another episode of our vlog where we discuss grooming industry subjects for aspiring groomers or people who are just curious. Today's subject is going to be on nail trims with a specific focus of the difference and expectations from a veterinary staff performing a nail trim versus a groomer performing a nail trim. Now, there are a few factors that we're going to discuss today that leads to that difference in approach. Um, I do want to say a note about veterinarians. They are your medical professionals. Um, if there's ever a question whether your groomer says something or your vet says something, your vet is the one you listen to. Uh, just to let you know, these uh, folks do an amazing job of uh, educating themselves on the medical side of uh, pets, whereas groomers, we are beauticians. So kind of think about, especially when it comes to nail trims, okay, that uh, you're looking at your groomer like your beautician, the person that you go see your man for your manicure or pedicure, whereas your veterinarian and the veterinarian staff, those are going to be people who are going to be more like the podiatrist, right? A little more intensive medically. And this definitely does come into play when we're talking about the differences in philosophy. So the basic principle, no matter which vocation you're in, so whether the veterinary side or the grooming side, obviously this is all for the health and wellness of the pet. We are beauticians, they are medical, right? But the basic principle of cutting a nail for any pet is to cut it as short as possible. So I'm gonna bring up a graphic uh, that we use for uh, cutting black dog nails. We had a video uh, that we released about uh, 10 months ago um, regarding this. And if you can see by the diagram, so we have a vein in the middle of the nail, right? And that vein can be different lengths depending on how short you cut it on a regular basis. This is called the quick, okay? So you can also quick a dog. So if you cut that vein too short, you can quick a dog. So the basic philosophy for any nail trim is to get as close to that vein as possible without quicking the dog. Okay, so now that we know we have to get as close to that vein as possible, let's talk about some of the factors that groomers are dealing with that puts us a little bit into a different position, right? And that we're going to go ahead and approach it in a little bit of a different philosophical way, okay? Due to some key factors that we're going to go through. The first premise is that blood and grooming do not mix. Uh, this is something I learned the first day of grooming school. Blood and grooming does not mix. So knowing and understanding that as groomers, we wanna make sure to avoid any blood, any kind of injury to a dog, and quicking a dog is technically an injury. So just be aware of the first premise that we're dealing with in grooming is that blood and grooming do not mix. So understanding that blood and grooming doesn't mix, um, let me just tell you from personal experience is uh, because of that premise, if you do quick a dog in grooming, people can get upset. I mean, sometimes people are great about it, um, but you want to avoid that um, as groomers because I will tell you as a manager, I've had to pay for dry cleaning bills on people's clothing for some of the staff that quicked a dog. Um, I've had to pay for car cleaning bills. I've had to deal with a lot of irate phone calls because a nail uh, came home and the uh, styptic powder uh, kind of fell out or whatnot and there's blood um, all over or a staff member didn't pack it properly with styptic powder so there's a lot of factors um, that as a manager and a private groomer um, that those types of phone calls you want to avoid and especially knowing that blood and grooming doesn't mix I understand why people would be upset when their dog is bleeding after they come back from the groomer because it's like going to your beautician or getting a pedicure and then coming back with blood it just doesn't mix Another premise that kind of shifts uh, the perspective from the grooming side is that remember that we have to spend usually at least an hour with each pet uh, after we do the nails. So I always do the nails right after the bath and that is because the nails are usually softer. They have a less chance of splitting. Okay, so it's a little easier to cut a nail that's been soaking. Same principle for humans when you go get your manicure or pedicure, they soak your nail. It's a little easier to work with, a little bit easier to cut. But what that means is that I'm doing the nail trim for most pets at the beginning of the process. So we do the bath, nail gets a little soaked and then I go ahead and cut the nails right out of the bath. So uh, we wanna make sure that the dog isn't upset. We're still gonna be lifting 
lifting their paws. We're still going to be going ahead, shaving underneath, doing all sorts of things that the dog needs to be manipulated and be happy about uh, spending that hour or three hours with us. So if we, at the beginning of the groom, make that dog uncomfortable, angry, cause it to have pain, that dog's not going to trust us as much uh, for the next hour or three hours. So just be aware that that also is included in the premise of um, groomers uh, with nail trims, um, how their philosophy changes, is that uh, we have to spend a lot of time with these dogs after the nail trim, usually. Okay, third premise that c comes into play a lot um, when determining how groomers look at uh, cutting nails. Um, let's just look at the sheer numbers of what we're talking about. So um, most of the time groomers will do, let's just take a national average, I suppose, of six dogs a day, six appointments a day. Um, now each of those dogs has at least, usually unless they have some kind of an amputation, right? Eight uh, nails in their front, right? Eight nails in their back, sometimes do claws in the front, sometimes do claws in the back. So at least 16 nails per dog. Most of the dogs do have 18 nails, right? Because they usually have their front do claws. And then some dogs actually have 20 nails because they have their rear do claws. And don't get me started with the Great Pyrenees where they have an extra rear do claw. So we're talking 22 nails um, for certain breeds. So just know that the average is usually 18 nails per dog. So doing six dogs a day, five days a week with 18 nails on each dog basically gives us, uh, by the end of the week, we're doing about 500, 540 nails uh, per week. Uh, you multiply that for the month, so we're looking at about 2,000, 2,100 individual nails that a groomer, each groomer in this world is doing, um, which equates to something like 25,000 individual nails a year. Okay, taking this sheer number and what we know with statistics, right? When you increase the number, right? The chances of something happening increases. So if you're asking a groomer to cut as close as possible to the vein on 25,000 nails, individual nails a year, what's gonna happen is you are increasing your chances for the groomer to quick that dog. And again, going back to our first premise, blood and grooming do not mix. So we want to avoid that. So the final premise that comes into play into how groomers perceive nail trims versus uh, medical staff and veterinary staff is the amount of regularity that we see our clients. So uh, a pet might go see a vet maybe once a year for their annual checkup if they're healthy. Um, and so that's when they get their nails done. And of course the vet techs or the vet's gonna take those nails as short as possible because this might be a once in a year kind of a thing. For us groomers, we're seeing these dogs on a regular basis. Most of my clients come see me at least once a month, um, sometimes every three weeks. For uh, other dogs that don't come in very often, it's at the most every two to three months uh, for those rare uh, appointments. So just to kind of put that in there also is that because groomers are regularly seeing dogs, um, that in terms of cutting the nail, we're, might, we might not have that philosophy of we need to get all the way to the quick and if we quick them, well, too bad because we're not gonna see them for another year. We can go ahead and put this into our mental equation of how we're gonna handle nails, knowing that we're gonna see these guys on a regular basis. Well, okay, that's about it. I hope that brings in a little bit of insight into the difference uh, between how groomers perceive and approach nail trims versus medical staff. So your vet techs, your veterinarians um, who are gonna go ahead and take them down all the way to the quick, um, which is what you're supposed to do, right? Um, but as groomers, we just can't do that because we're really not in that field of medical, right? Blood and grooming does not mix. Um, and with all the other factors, just the sheer numbers of nails, I don't know any vocation that does as many dog nails as groomers do. I'm trying to think, and if you guys can think of uh, one, please put it down below. But uh, my gosh, it is uh, our, one of the things that we are just doing day in, day out, hundreds and hundreds of nails a week. Uh, so just understand that it's going to be more from a maintenance perspective. So that's what we're going to be focusing on so that your pets stay safe and happy while they're getting groomed. Guys, thank you so much for subscribing. Thanks for liking. Uh, click that thumbs up if you did like this video. We really do appreciate it. Um, if you have any comments, questions, please put them down below. We are listening and we'll be happy to answer them for you. Guys, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. We'll see you soon.